Official tells Fox News, and I quote, it was indeed the mother load. We don't have any idea what that means. We have no context for that. We don't know what was on this stuff. Uh, but they went on to say, and here's another quote from the senior U.S. official, more stuff than you would expect from someone worried about their security. Catherine Herridge works intelligence for us. She's live in Washington. Internet connection, no phone line, nothing to suggest that Osama bin Laden has actually been the one who put together any recent terror attacks. Is there a belief now that he knew something about operational control now and that some of that might have been on these computers, Catherine? Well, what a U.S. official said to me today earlier, uh, earlier today, pardon me, is that we don't understand fully what's on those um, computer drives, but it seems clear that without the phone and without the Internet, Osama bin Laden had to rely heavily on these storage devices, so thumb drives, um, CDs, DVDs, all of that kind of thing, in order to just catalog the information that he had, whether it was messages or whether it was letters he was sending out to people. The other thing that was pointing out to me that with a large number of family members at the compound is Jennifer was just reporting. It showed that bin Laden felt very safe and comfortable in that location. We believe he lived there for several years. So that also explains, I think, that large amount of data and potentially what it may hold. Uh, finally, on just locating the compound, what I was told, Shep, is that a key element of that was Khali Sheikh Mohammed. And not that Khali Sheikh Mohammed provided the name of the courier and explained his importance, but rather it was the fact that Khali Sheikh Mohammed downplayed the importance of this individual, sort of dissed him to interior. And it was the strength of those denials that led people to believe that the courier was a very important person to Osama bin Laden, and that really set up the red flag, or sent up the red flag, pardon me, for the CIA, Shep. And I guess not surprisingly, there are competing narratives about uh, how intelligence was gained. Uh, Peter King, a prominent Republican last mm -hmm. night, came out and said, uh, you know, they got it through waterboarding, and now people in the administration are saying, no, it wasn't through waterboarding, so do we have any clue? Really? I think we have some clarity um, now, and of course, as you point out, this is Washington, D.C., so this issue is going to become very political. What I've been able to ascertain talking to people within the intelligence community and that what we've also heard publicly from administration officials and their support is that waterboarding did not provide that single piece of information that really got us on the road to that compound. Let's listen to Diane Feinstein. Well, what I said was, to the best of our knowledge, based on a look, None of it came as a result of harsh interrogation practices. What's not in dispute today, Shep, is that original thread of information, if you will, came from the CIA program in 2003. Waterboarding was one component of that program. It was not the entire program. And what officials are emphasizing, just like a lot of things, it's a giant puzzle or a mosaic. You had to have multiple pieces put together over several years before you ultimately were led to that compound. But you make a good point. It's become very political and whether waterboarding was sort of the key that unlocked everything. Is anybody talking about uh, the fact that this is illegal, this operation was illegal, or is that a matter that's going to be left for another day? That's an excellent question. People are not discussing that, at least not with me. I feel like what we're really getting right now is that sort of first blush of the details of the operation and how it went down. The one thing that's caught my attention in my reporting so far, and it was made to me by a U.S. official, is that there appears to be a disturbing pattern that's emerging. When you look at these big pickups, and I'll say Osama bin Laden to start, you look at Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, you look at Ramzi bin al-Shib, who was an alleged conspirator for 9-11, and you also look at a recent pickup, Umar Patek. He was found in the same area where bin Laden was killed. What's troubling here is that they were all identified in either major urban centers in Pakistan or near major urban centers. So they were all hiding, if you will, in plain sight. They were not in the tribal areas of Pakistan, where the U.S. has placed such a focus, not only with the drone campaign, but also with our military campaign in that area as well. One after another, after mm -hmm. another, after another, all in big yeah. metropolitan areas. That's a really, yeah, that is a really important thing, I think, going forward, because it really undercuts the narrative. Pakistan has been providing strong intelligence to us, and it raises questions about how four people of that profile could exist major urban centers when the narrative has largely been that they were in the tribal areas of Pakistan. It is a good question. Wonderful mm -hmm. ever get answers. Time will tell, I suppose. Catherine, thank you. You're welcome.